This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Sky Island by L. Frank Baum. Chapter 25 The Ruler of Sky Island. The girl now took off Rosalie's ring and put it carefully away in her pocket. It won't matter who sees me now, she remarked, and I want em to know that you and me, Cap'n, are running this kingdom. I'm Queen of the Pinkies and Boolooroo's of the Blues and what's that? asked the sailor. Your your what, Trot? Boolooroo's. Isn't that right, Cap'n? I don't know, mate. It sounds bigger than you are, and I don't like the word anyhow. Suppose you just call yourself the boss. That fits the bill, and don't need pronouncin'. All right, she said, queen of the pinkies and boss of the blues. Seems funny, don't it, Cap'n Bill? Just then they heard a sound of footsteps in the corridor. The soldiers had partly recovered their courage, and fearful of the anger of their dreaded Boolooroo, whom the princesses declared would punish them severely, had ventured to return to the room. They came rather haltingly, though, and the captain of the guards first put his head cautiously through the doorway to see if the coast was clear. The goat discovered him and tried to make a rush, but the rope held the animal back, and when the captain saw this he came forward more boldly. Halt! cried Trot. The captain halted, his soldiers peering curiously over his shoulders, and the six snub-nosed princesses looking on from behind, where they considered themselves safe. "'If anyone dares enter this room without my permission,' said Trot, "'I'll pull this cord and slice your master that once was the Boolooroo. "'Don't come in! Don't come in!' yelled the Boolooroo in a terrified voice. Then they saw that the sailor was free and the Boolooroo bound in his place. The soldiers were secretly glad to observe this, but the princesses were highly indignant. "'Release his majesty at once!' cried Indigo from the corridor. "'You shall be severely punished for this rebellion.' "'Don't worry,' replied Trot. "'His majesty isn't his majesty any longer. "'He's just a common blueskin. "'Cap'n Bill and I propose running this island ourselves after this. "'You've got to obey me, for I'm the boolooroo "'no, I mean the boss of the blues, "'and I've a notion to run things my own way.' "'You can't,' said Turquoise scornfully. "'The law says—' "'Bother the law!' exclaimed Trot. "'I'll make the laws myself from now on, "'and I'll unmake every law you ever had before I conquered you.' "'Oh, have you conquered us, then?' asked the captain of the guards in a surprised tone. "'Of course,' said Trot. "'Can't you see?' "'It looks like it,' admitted the captain. "'Captain Bill is going to be my general of the army, "'and the royal manager of the Blue Country,' continued Trot. "'so you'll mind what he says.' "'Nonsense!' shouted Indigo. "'March in and capture them, Captain. "'Never mind if they do slice the Boolooroo. "'I'm his daughter, and I'll rule the kingdom.' "'You won't!' screamed Cobalt. "'I'll rule it. "'I'll rule it myself!' cried Cerulia. "'No, no!' yelled Turquoise. "'I'll be the ruler.' "'That shall be my privilege!' shouted Sapphire. "'Cobalt began to say, "'I'm the... "'Be quiet,' said Trot sternly. "'Would you have your own father sliced so that you could rule in his place?' "'Yes, yes, of course,' rejoined the six princesses, without a second's hesitation. "'Well, well, what do you think of that, Mr. Boolooroo?' asked Cap'n Bill. "'They're undutiful daughters. Don't pay any attention to them,' replied the frightened Boolooroo. "'We're not going to,' said Trot. "'Now you, Blue Cap'n.' "'Who are you and your soldiers going to obey, me or the snub-nosed ones?' "'You,' declared the captain of the guards positively, "'for he hated the princesses, as did all the blueskins. "'Then escort these girls to their rooms, lock em in, and put a guard before the door.' "'At once the soldiers seized the princesses, and notwithstanding their snarls and struggles, "'marched them to their rooms and locked them in. "'While they were gone on this errand, the Boolooroo begged to be released.' whining and wailing for fear the knife would fall upon him. But Trot did not think it safe to unbind him just then. When the soldiers returned, she told their leader to put a strong guard before the palace, and to admit no one unless she or Cap'n Bill gave the order to do so. The soldiers obeyed readily, and when Trot and Cap'n Bill were left alone, 
they turned the goat loose in the room of the great knife, and they locked the animal in with the Boolaroo. The billy goat is the very best guard we could have, for everybody's frayed o' him, remarked Cap'n Bill as he put the key of the room in his pocket. So now, Queen Trot, what's next on the program? Next, said Trot, we're going to hunt for that umbrella, Cap'n. I don't mean to stay in this dismal blue country long, even if I am the queen. Let's find the umbrella and get home as soon as we can. That suits me, the sailor joyfully exclaimed, and then the two began a careful search through the palace. They went into every room and looked behind the furniture and underneath the beds and in every crack and corner, but no place could they spy the magic umbrella. Cap'n Bill even ventured to enter the rooms of the six snub-nosed princesses, who were by this time so thoroughly alarmed that they had become meek and mild as could be. But the umbrella wasn't there, either. Finally they returned to the great throne room of the palace, where they seated themselves on the throne and tried to think what could possibly have become of the precious umbrella. While they were sitting and talking together, the captain of the guards entered and bowed respectfully. "'Beg pardon, your small-sized majesty,' said he to Trot, "'but it is my duty to report that the Pinkies are preparing to attack the city.' "'Oh, I'd forgotten the Pinkies,' exclaimed the girl. "'Tell me, Captain, have you such a thing as a brass band in this city?' "'We have two fine bands, but they're not brass,' replied the captain. "'Their instruments are made of blue metal.' "'Well, order em out,' commanded Trot, "'and say, get all the soldiers together, "'and tell all the people there's going to be a high time "'in the blue city tonight. "'We'll have music and dancing and eating and—' "'And neckties to drink, Trot. "'Don't forget the royal neckties,' urged Cap'n Bill. "'We'll have all the fun there is going,' continued the girl, "'for we are to entertain the army of the Pinkies.' "'The Pinkies!' exclaimed the captain of the guards. "'Why, there are enemies, your short highness.' "'Not any more,' replied Trot. "'I'm Queen of the Pinkies, and I'm also Queen of the Blues. "'So I won't have my people quarreling. "'Tell the blue people we are to throw open the gates "'and welcome the Pinkies to the city, "'where everybody will join in a grand celebration. "'And just as soon as you've spread the news "'and got the bands tuned up and the soldiers ready to march, "'you let us know and we'll head the procession.' "'Your microscopic majesty shall be obeyed,' said the captain, and went away to carry out these commands. End of chapter 25